Yeah, so why would you ever want to buy a condo in Manila, Philippines, when you can simply just rent a place in BGC or Makati for as low as 25,000 pesos a month, which is only like 438 US dollars a month? Why tie up capital? Why form an obligation? Why form a commitment on a condo? Why park all that money in a place like the Philippines that is of course prone to volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, typhoons, and other potential problems that are largely outside of the ordinary average investor's uh, control, right? Yeah, so as a foreigner myself coming from the United States, of course, I've had to ask myself this question because I've been looking at a lot of condos, ones that are made by DMCI, SMDC, and condos made through by Rockwell, and condos made by Mega World, and condos made by Ayala Land and Ayala Land Premier. And I get excited oftentimes when I see these places, and I really give a lot of thought to whether or not I would want to own one or multiple condos. And it gets me to thinking, so let's figure out reasons why someone like me or another person who perhaps is a foreigner from outside of the Philippines would wanna come here and actually invest in condos. So let's dive right into it. So one of the top reasons is if you just simply enjoy living in the ur an urban setting within the Philippines. The Philippines has so much to offer, it has friendly people, it has good weather, it has interesting foods, and it has really upscale malls also and really relative and constantly improving transportation systems here. I mean, I can click a button Button on my phone and just call it grab a four seater or a six seater is generally very reliable they also have joy right now as well so I just jot down some notes here to add to what I'm saying if you know you like spending time in Philippines and you know you also prefer the modern conveniences you can have a base here if you're like basically a digital nomad or someone who's looking to uh, basically travel around the world and you want to come back to Philippines on a regular basis right so it makes more sense in some cases if you had a base here so if it would prevent you from having to spend extra money on rent when you come back here because rent prices are likely going to keep going up. Airbnbs are pretty expensive as well. So if you're just paying a set amount of money every single month, you're also going to be gaining equity. You can be gaining appreciation perhaps. And also if you're here for extended period of time, it would prevent you from having to move. Let's say like you have an Airbnb that you really like and you book it for one month. Chances are it might not be available when your term is done if you don't automatically have a deal worked out with the owner of the Airbnb. So you're constantly be having to move and change your routine and find a new place to get your hair cut and a new place to go grocery shopping and a new place to do X, Y, and Z, right? So you have to constantly be switching up your routine and that leads to basically anti-productive uh, situations and you're far less effective under those circumstances. But if you have an actual address here, you're you're basically gaining equity potentially. You're, get, you're definitely gaining equity. You're potentially gaining appreciation. And you can also totally customize the place. You can add in floating shelves. You can remove the cabinetry. You can improve the paint. You can improve the, the air conditioning. You can improve a lot of stuff that's within your control within an actual unit. So that's a bunch of cool stuff why you might want to own. But let's get into some more specific things that are more professional reasons why you probably want to own a condo in Manila. One is like simply if you know, you again, you know, uh, forming on the prerequisite that you're going to be staying in Philippines or spending a lot of time in the Philippines, parking some of your capital into a condominium could be a pretty good hedge against inflation. Uh, things are getting more expensive in the Philippines and especially in the capital area of Manila. Uh, one of my YouTube commenters said in 2018, they bought a studio apartment uh, from a DMCI builder and they spent around three or four million pesos on that unit. And those units today are selling for around six million, going up, going on six and a half million pesos, okay? So they've already pretty much doubled for the square per square meter, the price is going up. So it was like $1,500 per square meter before, now it's going up to like $3,000, $4,000 per square meter because there's less land to build on and the population is also increasing. And there's a lot of jobs available in Manila compared to the whole regions of Philippines. A lot of the highest paying best jobs are in the capital regions of Philippines. So a lot of people wanna come from the provincial areas to the city that, especially in the northern part of Philippines because and that, that puts a strain on housing how much supply is available for housing while well, the less supply you guessed it due to increased demand is going to potentially inflate or increase the prices as well and why I'm saying all this is because if you buy a condo and you buy it like say today in the present five ten years from now that same condo if you wanted to buy it again for the same square meters the same size same location it might double so something five million pesos today could be ten million pesos you know in five years from now or something that rents in BGC right now for 25,000 pesos a month okay five years from now that might be renting for 40 45 50 000 pesos a month or perhaps more uh, due to a strain on the supply due to increased demand from other tourists coming here deciding to live here deciding to retire here or other people throughout the philippines recognize 
recognizing that there's more jobs and opportunities directly in the wealthier parts of this particular country, which is definitely the capital region of Manila, let's be honest. Reason number three why you might want to buy a condo in Manila as a foreigner could basically be to serve as a passive cash flow slash investment. So if you got a bunch of money laying around in your bank account, not earning you any interest and it's just sitting there, you could buy a condo here if you're going to be living in this region or like I said before, as a prerequisite, you like Philippines, so you have a preferential uh so you have a preference for doing business here and living here, you might as well potentially invest here as well, right? If you want to. So that being said, you could basically get a pretty solid ROI on a long-term semi-passive or completely passive investment. So if you bought a condo and you rented it out and you have some, a good tenant in that place, of course you could stand to gain equity, potentially appreciation. And I think over time it will definitely appreciate just because of everything we were just talking about with prices going up because of demand being put, putting pressure on the supply and squeezing the supply. But uh, yeah, so, and you could also stand to gain some cash flow. Maybe you're making 300 US dollars per month in profit or cash flow, and it's very passive. That's good. That's 15,000, 16,000 pesos, completely profit cash flow income here is pretty good, uh, depending on how you live your lifestyle. For me, not really. I need a lot more money than that because I just spend more money and I want to have a high quality of life. But if you have multiple condos, like say you have five condos netting you $300 US per month, that's $1,500 a month of cash flow. That's about 75,000 pesos, 80,000 pesos a month. That's not bad because you can have a pretty decent, pretty good, let's be honest, that's a fair, that's a pretty good quality of life. So far in 2022 in Manila, you can do quite a bit with that type of income from other countries like Australia, United States, you would laugh at that. But here it's actually, it's actually, you can actually do something with that. So yeah. Reason number four is you could turn it into a business where you're literally making significantly more than what I just said. So for example, if you had a semi-active cash flow, as opposed to passive, passive cash flow would be you have one tenant in there renting it for six months or 12 months. Semi-active cash flow would basically be like Airbnb, where there is a lot more activity involved and you actually have to do more work because there's new people coming in and out. But you could definitely have like, you know, a, a cash flow potential of like $500 a month or $600 or $700 per month US uh, per condo if you do a really good job marketing it and uh, decking it out in the interior and picking the location and a couple other factors. But it's certainly possible. And if you have like three or four condos making you $500 US dollars per month, then you're looking at like $1,500 to $2,000 per month in cash flow. I'd probably be like a full-time business or job, but you could again hire help. You could have like one or two full-time employees for like uh, four to six hundred dollars a month, basically helping you uh, keep everything clean and managing everything and meeting with the tenants or I'm sorry, the guests for Airbnb and stuff like that. So you could heavily automatable, heavily scalable. And besides the cash flow, you could potentially get that appreciation factor as well and also create some jobs here in the Philippines, uh, which is always a great thing to do as a, uh, you know, a capitalistic uh, mindset. Reason number five. Uh, you could just do it to diversify where you have your capital. You have some capital perhaps in your bank, some maybe in stocks, maybe some in bonds, real estate maybe in uh, your home country if you have real estate there. Or uh, And yeah, having real estate in a foreign country isn't necessarily a bad idea. It's just more diversification in your investment portfolio. So if you have the extra cash laying around, it's not a horrible idea. Uh, whenever you make a big decision like this, you do want to do your due diligence. You do want to talk to reputable, reputable people. You do want to ask yourself questions like, what could go wrong with this? What's the worst case scenario with this uh, investment? And you got to be prepared for the worst case scenario. So um, yes, Philippines is prone to natural disasters, but it's anybody's best guess if there ever will be a cataclysmic earthquake in this country or not. Um, I know a lot of that stops a lot of people, but the truth is we really don't know. If you go on Google and you research how many earthquakes have that have been a, a scale of 7.0 magnitude or higher in the Philippines, there haven't been that many um, throughout history based off of what I was checking and looking at. So, but yeah, if you're a super risk averse person, then okay, uh, maybe not necessarily don't buy condos in the Philippines. And I always love li listening to opinions like that, but I don't think something like that would personally stop me. There are insurance companies here that are designed to help with situations like that. How organized and effective and how uh, much we could rely or count on those companies if, you know, let's say shit hit the fan. I don't know. That's again, anybody's best guess. Okay, so reason number six is you could basically theoretically take a loan against the equity that you have built inside of any condos that you have uh, invested in. So instead of selling the condo in order to get your money back out of the condo to spend it, you could simply just spend your equity more or less by having a loan against the equity in your condo. And you could also get interest only loan so that you would not have to pay it back in a, a very like a specified uh, time frame. So if you put if you park like 25,000 US dollars, for example, in a condo, let's say over the course of five years, 
Uh, you have fifty thousand dollars worth of perceived equity after appreciation and uh, principal payments, etc. Pay payments made to principal. Let's say you want that fifty grand, but you don't want to sell it. Or let's say you want to sell it, but you're having a very hard time selling it because the market conditions aren't just good to sell that specific unit at the, what its true value is. You could potentially just find a bank that will give you a loan against that fifty thousand dollars. It's called a secured loan, and sometimes you can get loans like this where you, they they give you basically fifty k, and you can use that money as if you had sold the place. You obviously have to pay that money back to the bank if it's a traditional loan where uh, you pay principal interest every month but you can also just get an interest only loan where you're just paying a flat fee like 150 dollars or you know 250 dollars a month interest only payments for a specified period of time before you have to actually start acknowledging your paying the principal this gives you the ability as a flex option in order to spend that money and that equity against your secured asset and uh, I would assume since it's secured by the asset, if you didn't, if you spent all the money and you stopped making payments on the loan, they would probably just take over uh, your condo, the bank would, that you couldn't sell anyway. I, I don't know how it works in every single country. I'm not even gonna begin to pretend I'm an expert on that. Um, and that's, that's also unethical. So I would never, ever, ever suggest you do that. But the, the goal is you would, you would obviously pay that money back after you sold the condo, right? To give yourself time, but you could access that capital if you needed it for something like uh, a trend life transition or uh, a family need or a different investment or a different uh, business idea or whatever, or just for money because maybe you're getting old and you want the money to spend it, enjoy your life before uh, time's up. So yeah, there's lots of reasons why you could do that. Okay, reason number seven is to have a base or address here in the Philippines that basically costs you 50% less than the other condos and units that are gonna be for sale or for rent, you know, five years from now. Like I mentioned this before, but inflation is on the rise and so are expenses for Manila. Manila is not getting, uh, is not becoming a cheaper place to live. Uh, so if you were to buy a condo here as a foreigner, because uh, you know that you're gonna wanna spend a duration of time in the Philippines in the future, it's a, it could be very smart to do uh, to wrap uh, uh, a space here that you can live in whenever you want to at will. And it's going to have a very specific low monthly payment wrapped in from a mortgage or whatever after the down payment you input. And uh, you could rent it out if you didn't want to suffer those small little losses while you're not actually living in the unit. But there's like, for example, if, <laughs> if you know you're going to be in Philippines long term because you've just made up your mind or you want to have a base here because you like the weather, you like the people, you like the BGC area, you like the modern conveniences that certain parts of uh, the city of Manila has to offer. Uh, yeah, it's good to because you, you're, you're wrapping yourself in a lower fixed monthly uh, situation to go there and live versus spending outlandish amounts of money on Airbnb and always having to move around and then also having to recognize the mu the facts or the music that a lot of the super, you know, highly desirable places that used to be super cheap could are probably not always going to be that way. They could, but I doubt it. Um, you know, so we'll see. Time will tell. Time time tells all. So with five years from now, we'll see what BGC places rent for, Makati places rent for, as more and more of the, the Philippines uh, people spill into Manila more than likely. This, you know, for some, some will commute and live outside the city, but some will want to live in the city, right? So putting a farther strain on the supply of housing. And they're building constantly here, but uh, if you've noticed the trends and it can be confirmed by other investors and locals who buy condos is the condos are not being are not getting cheaper for people who want to own them they're getting a lot more expensive and really quickly as well so we kind of already talked about the risk of natural disasters and insurance companies uh, there are insurance companies of course out there that will help secure your investments um, you have to put your faith and trust in that situation but you should also think to yourself as a resourceful human being or as a foreigner don't put all your eggs in one basket. Of course, it's good if you have a passport, like a US passport, it's good to invest in places in your home country that are not prone to natural disasters, but it's also not a bad idea to spend a little bit of your capital to diversify your portfolio in a foreign country if you understand the risks and if you understand what the potential upsides are. And for me, after my personal opinion, looking at the upsides and the downsides, I think there's a strong chance that in the future I could invest in a condo or multiple condos here in Manila. I still have to do more research. However, based off of what I have personally seen, I don't think it's going to be a major problem with respect to the whole earthquake thing. And you know, I could be completely wrong with that. I could be completely wrong about that. Uh, I know Philippines gets a lot of earthquakes. I've ex I felt the earthquakes. I've you know living in uh, Rockwell, I've felt an earthquake probably at least a dozen times now. Um, but yeah, that being said, I'm not an expert on it. I think everything I said was pretty balanced advice. And just to give you actually some perspective why a foreigner would want to invest in a bunch of condos in this country. Don't forget, Manila and the Metro Manila uh, is, is not the only places you can buy 
or invest in condominium units in the Philippines. The Philippines is huge. It's a giant chain of islands. There's many other parts of this country you could buy, if you're a foreigner, uh, condominiums. Unfortunately, you cannot buy land unless you're, I think, are married to a Filipino woman. And then I think she can potentially like, buy the land or whatever and add you to it. Maybe, maybe not. That might be possible to do. But uh, yeah, another thing that could drastically uh, set the prices of housing and rent through the roof and uh, making your condominium investments appreciate drastically be, could be the subway system that they're building in the Manila uh, area, in the capital of Manila. It's expected to be done and usable, I think, in 2027 or 2028. So that's about four or five years into the distance. But if you invest in a condo now, four or five years from now, the subway is completed as planned. And I believe they're getting help. I believe Philippines is getting help from Japan to construct that subway. If I if I heard correctly, I have to double check on that. That's that would be good news because obviously, of course, Japan is Japan makes some of the fine. Japan has some of the finest engineers on the planet. Let's be honest. Uh, so that would be super awesome. But yeah, at any rate, this has been Justin Spencer. 80% of my viewers are not subscribed to the channel. Thank you to the 20% who are. If you did get any value whatsoever out of this content today, please consider subscribing so I can stay in touch with you and form a connection with you and, and continue to entertain you and guide you with uh, Philippines related content and other useful information. All right, thank you so much. I'll see you on some of the other vlogs. Bye for now.